In Cambodia, the long drawn out trial of leaders of the Khmer Rouge has hit another snag. The Khmer Rouge are held responsible for what's known as the killing fields, the deaths of as many as two million Cambodians in the mid 70s. Just one Khmer Rouge official, the warden of an infamous prison in the capital, Phnom Penh, has ever been brought to justice. Three others are in front of a UN sponsored tribunal, but it's beginning to look as if they will never be tried. Here's our contributor in Phnom Penh, Justine Drennan. The court's already released one of the four accused former leaders, social affairs minister under the Khmer Rouge Ing Tirit, due to a diagnosis of irreversible dementia. And the remaining three accused, all in their 80s, each have spent time in the hospital in the past few months. Meanwhile, the courts faced routine accusations of corruption and inefficiency. And since November, the Cambodian side hasn't been able to pay its staff salaries. The decision to split the trial into several mini trials on various topics also has drawn criticism that under the current time pressures, the hearings will probably only have time to get to one mini trial. So given these concerns that um, this structure wouldn't reflect the full scope of charges against the accused, the Supreme Court of the Tribunal earlier this month ordered the judges leading the hearings to reconsider the structure. And this order has further cast doubt on the court's effectiveness and prompted several Cambodians to express their discontent online. One commenter on news website Cam News writes, to sentence these betrayers in country isn't going to work. It's still the same. It would be better to send this case to an international court to finish this fast. Another writes, all the judges are too scared to arrest and sentence those Khmer Rouge leaders. Or maybe the judges themselves are Khmer Rouge too? Actually, many of Cambodia's top officials used to be Khmer Rouge cadres. And in 2009, the court summons six of them, but all refuse to appear. Referring to this obstruction, this post says, we all know the most powerful people in Cambodia refuse to let the court's international side get involved in this Khmer Rouge crimes case because they are afraid of something. Another Cam News reader contrasts the Khmer Rouge Tribunal with other courts in the country that have sentenced the ruling party's opponents. He writes, if they want to finish this case, they would have done it a long time ago, just like in Mr. Mam Sanando's case. Mam Sanando, an independent radio owner, was a strong opposition voice, and in the past year, he was sentenced to 20 years in prison on charges that most believe were trumped up. The commenter notes, when they sentenced Mr. Mam Sanando, even though he did nothing wrong, how could they judge so fast and without receiving any money, huh? In fact, some see money rather than politics behind the Khmer Rouge Tribunal's delays. The court's Cambodian side has been accused of drawing out proceedings to continue to profit from the court's international funding. And this commenter writes, when they can't trick others into giving them money anymore, there will be a way to solve this, so don't worry. As deliberations about the trial structure continue, the tribunal's future remains uncertain. In Phnom Penh, I'm Justine Drennan for Link Asia. Since Justine filed her report, the tribunal's been suspended because its Cambodian employees are on strike over those unpaid wages. Now on U.S. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.